Hello everyone, and welcome back to Nate's Vintage Trains. In this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to tell the history of a place that is very near and dear to my heart, called Southern California Live Steamers. This little gem of the South Bay, Southern California, and Los Angeles has quite the history. So, let's get started. Many people in the early 1900s were making miniature, scaled-down live steam locomotives, mainly in England and the United States. Each of these people would work on their locomotives by themselves without knowing there might be another person who's doing the same thing nearby. The Brotherhood of Live Steamers was formed in 1932 and the first secretary to take the task of keeping track of all of the live steam builders in the United States was Carl Purinton. The first meeting of BLS was at Carl Purinton's home track in Marblehead, Massachusetts, starting in 1933. After a few meetings, there would be too many people for the track, and groups would start to split up and have their own meetings at various other places. In order to keep track of all the live steamers, Carl Purinton, with the help of Harry Dixon, started the Wandering Locomotive Book, which allowed hobbyists to know about other live steamers in the area. Soon enough, a number of people who build live steam locomotives in Southern California began to meet with each other and discuss trains. With some encouragement, a few ended up forming the Southern California Live Steamers in 1941. The club held their first meeting in January 1942, and they voted for club officers at that time. One requirement to be part of the club was that each member had to own a steam locomotive. Some members went to the lengths of having their own backyard railroad. Notable members who had their own private railroads included Ollie Johnston's one-inch scale La Cañada Valley Railroad in Flint Ridge, Ward Kimball's full-size narrow-gauge Grizzly Flats Railroad in San Gabriel, and Walt Disney's Carrollwood Pacific Railroad in the Holmby Hills. One member, Martin Lewis, moved to Lamita where he built a home for him and his wife, Irene. He constructed a factory in their backyard for producing live steam locomotives, which was called Little Engines. The Lewises would construct two loops of track as well as a turntable and steaming bays for prepping locomotives. The track served as a place where Little Engines locomotives could be demonstrated to customers. Southern California Live Steamers was incorporated in 1948. The track the Lewises constructed became the club track for members to run and talk about trains. Martin Lewis would pass away in 1948, leaving Irene Lewis to operate Little Engines and continue to make locomotive kits and models. In 1967, she made the Lamita Railroad Museum in honor of her husband. In the 1950s, membership had grown to over 100 individuals. A third loop of track was added at Lamita for the Brotherhood of Live Steamers annual meet in September of 1954. From the 1960s to the 1980s, a few other clubs would be created as spin-offs from SCLS. These included Los Angeles Live Steamers, Riverside Live Steamers, and what would become Orange County Model Engineers. By the 1980s, Irene Lewis had sold Little Engines to Moody Braun, but the club still operated on the Little Engines track. In 1987, the city of Torrance was celebrating 75 years. A board member of SCLS made an agreement with the city manager of Torrance to build a temporary setup to operate trains near Wilson Park. The necessary rails and ties for the track were donated, then assembled at Lamita and brought to Torrance for final assembly. A single oval of track was put together with a siding and spur to load and unload trains. The tracks were called the Torrance and Lamita divisions. On Saturday, October 24th, the city of Torrance held a 75th birthday celebration at Wilson Park. As part of that celebration, the Southern California Live Steamers were allowed to set up and operate their miniature railroad equipment. Free rides were provided for the public. The original plan was to have this layout remain there for just 30 days. 
However, now that this little railroad is operational, the mayor of Torrance and some members of the city council are considering the possibility of making this a permanent part of the park. Such an arrangement would be similar to the arrangement that the city of Los Angeles has with the LA Live steamers in Griffith Park. Uh, at the moment, our arrangement with the city of Torrance is to leave this set up in here for a 30-day period. However, there is a possibility of keeping it in for a longer period if we can work out the details with the city and the uh, parks department, etc., to use this area for a longer period. And it depends on the reaction of the public and so forth and the, of course, the long, uh, Torrance City Council, etc. But we have uh, been supported by various commercial enterprises. Reynolds Aluminum donated all of the rail to us. Watt Builders supplied all of our ties. And we, the uh, Southern California Live Steamers, we have donated all the labor to lay this track and uh, check it out and provide the engines and the cars to take the public for a ride, to introduce them to uh, the live steam activity in Southern California. And we think by the reaction we've seen here today, it's, uh, it's a going thing and we'd like to stay here. If we can, that can be arranged with the city council or whoever. Torrance allowed for less restrictions in membership, including the requirement of having to have a live steam locomotive, and SCLS grew once again. Mrs. Lewis passed away in 1990, and the track at Lamita was taken out sometime in the early 1990s. The Torrance track was on nothing but flat dirt, and many additions were made. Trees and foliage were planted, another loop of track added, a tunnel, steaming bays, and storage containers were put in place, tool sheds, clubhouse, a queue for the lines of people, station, full-size railroad cars, and the list goes on. Now the ride, including the Crenshaw extension, has about 5,900 feet of track and another 3,700 feet of side tracks. Originally, rides were on the first Sunday of each month and monthly meetings held on the third Saturday of every month. In the late 2000s, train rides were added to the monthly meeting day. Now Southern California Live Steamers holds public train rides every first Sunday of the month between 11 and 3, and the third Saturday of the month between 12 and 3. In the time since the club has been at Torrance, SCLS has had the pleasure of giving rides to over 634,000 people as of January 2022, and recently celebrated 80 years as a club. This is a little-known gem of Southern California and Los Angeles with a long history. Come and visit on public run days on the first Sunday and third Saturday of every month. If you are interested, ask about becoming a member and volunteering. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.